This week's content comes to us from a question from Khalil Luch9936. I hope I got your name right, my friend. The question was, could I ask how to restore the SQL MI database with the same name? Well, we're going to cover that on today's Tales from the Field. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding us on Tales from the Field, give us a like and hit that subscribe. We here on Tales from the Field like to drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have the Roundtable where we share blogs, videos, posts by you, the Azure community, for the Azure community. We also have special guests in the Fabric Roundup, so tune in for those and then on mondays and wednesdays we drop this thing we call ms tech bits you're watching one of those now let's get over to it in a previous video we did a restore of an existing database to a point in time recovery which led to a question from our subscriber clear luch 9936 asking how could he restore the sql mi database with the same name well, if we scroll down, we have some instructions on how we recommend to do that. To overwrite an existing database, we recommend dropping the original database that you want to overwrite and then rename the restored database to the point in time name of the database you drop. So I like to add a little bit of an extra step here. What I like to do is I like to first restore the point in time recovery database. We need to do that anyhow. Anytime we restore a database to our past system, we need to restore it with a different name. So we might as well do this step first. And it provides me that sense of ease that I've recovered what I need to recover before I drop that database. So it's gonna go through a restore real quick here. We're not going to walk through this in detail. Go back to the point in time recovery video to watch this in detail. I'm just gonna walk through that real quick so we can get a point in time recovery database here so I can go through the steps of restoring the database, dropping the database, and then the final step of how we get it to the same name that we had prior. So you can see I have the AdventureWorks database and I have the AdventureWorks point in time recovery. So I've gone out and I've validated that the AdventureWorks point in time recovery PITR database meets my needs. Now I can go ahead and drop the database with the drop database AdventureWorks command. Once that's complete, we can refresh on the screen here and we'll see that it is dropped. With that being dropped, the next step we want to do to get the database back to its original name from our point in time recovery is we're going to alter the database AdventureWorks point in time recovery and we're going to modify that name to AdventureWorks. It's gonna get us back to the original name so we don't have to change our application code and the different pieces like that when we connect. So that is how we restore our point in time recovery database back to its original name. I know it's not quite, quite like on-premises or on an Azure VM. Next thing I wanna show here is that we have our AdventureWorks database restored. Let's go to backups real quick. On the screen, you're gonna see that the AdventureWorks database that we just restored has its earliest point in time recovery and available LTR backups. But let's go to delete it. This is where it gets exciting. Here, this is our original AdventureWorks database that we deleted. You can see that we have our earliest point in time recovery. That's when I created the database. And then we have our drop database time. So if the database we just recovered, the AdventureWorks PITR that we renamed doesn't meet our needs, well, we can restore back to that database from deleted database. So there you have it, three steps I like to take. First, do my point in time recovery, then I drop the database, and then I alter the database name back to its original name. So once again, not quite like what we would have on premises or an Azure SQL VM, but we do have the capability to do that. All right, there you have it. You know where we like to keep this going. In the comments down below, let us know what you think. Let us know if this helped you. And as always, be good to each other. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.